Hey everyone, we've got four Robotron reproduction cabarets here in the garage that are finally done. It's taken a long time to finish them, but we're pretty much done as far as this project goes. They're, the new owners will be will finish populating the cabinet. As you can see, there's coin doors and things like that missing, and they'll need monitors and boards and lights and speakers and wires and all that other stuff. But they all know how to do that, so they're going to be getting these empty cabinets. And it took a long time to do. It took longer than I wanted it to do. In theory, it was just going to take me a summer to do, and it took longer than that. It took probably almost two years, just under. And that's too long, in my opinion. However, they turned out really nice. They've all got stenciled sides with automotive paint, and I'll show you the paint that we use. Um, they've got reproduction artwork and things like that. One even has one of my reproduction lower coin doors that I did on Clav or KLOV or Arcade Museum forums, however you want to refer to it, um, when I did that originally. So they've got one of those installed. Um, but let's go, we'll take a, take a look at them here. So you can, as you can see, it turned out looking nice and fresh and shiny and probably slightly better than factory paint goes um, because of the nice crisp lines. And I know some of you guys prefer that factory look to it, but using a vinyl stencil, I wasn't able to achieve that reliably. Um, I think I would have had to use a traditional stencil to do that. Now these are all done with automotive paint, single stage paint, and it's wonderful to spray because it's you know your times, you know your dry times, you know your mixing ratios, and you know the quality of the product you're going to get at the end. So, let's see, here they all are. And this one even had, this is the one that has the lower coin door I was talking about. That's powder coated black. And so, one of the things I had made was the marquees. Now all these files are available on the internet. They're all there. Um, so I had the marquee made from a friend and I also had them make uh, monitor bezels. Now, the reason I had them do that instead of going with one of the other third party vendors was because I was afraid dimensions might be slightly off and I wanted to make sure everything fit. Well, I ended up using the original dimensions for the marquee. And the only thing that I never took into account was if you look, there's like a gap here and that gap is because there used to be a piece of plastic trim kind of holding it on and that changes things a little bit. Um, that and even on my other one down in the basement, there's that gap there. So something could be put there so that you don't have a light bleed. They used to have a piece of plastic that went onto the edge of those uh, plexi marquees or glass marquees and that, that would have done the job, but I don't have those and I'm not sure where to get those. If somebody knows, please let me know and I'll let all my friends who got these know where to get them. They'll, they'll come up with something anyway. The other thing I had to change was the dimension for the monitor. Uh, plexi because they had these brackets on the originals that I can't get and originally on mine I came up with a, a method and I'll show it to you. I think I've got a spare one over here Maybe my whip. Oh, here we go So originally I came up with something like this So I painted this black and then the monitor plastic slid into this except when you're using plywood it gets all chewed up um, just because of the nature of the wood and this was one of the, the test pieces here but something like that would work but we ended up making them a little bit longer they will could in the future go to the original and come up with a bracket for that system if they want to if they get a glass one from somebody like this old gamer phoenix arcade um so that that changed but it does look nice how it just kind of goes right in to the side there it looks looks good let's see as far as anything else changed um we made control panels that have uh, latches. If we go in there, we, we did put the latch up in there. And they'll be able to populate this. These, all these holes are designed to match the one from Phoenix Arcade, which does match an original one. Um, this has plastic on here. It's not actually scratched. Let's see. Um, as far as other little things go, well, let me show you. The, the back door, this dimension here, on the bottom, this board, is actually not the original, so the back door won't fit in the original one, but that's okay. Just one of those little things, I suppose. Um, oh, here, one of the other things I did to hold on, the 
monitor plexi is I use these little wire holders here. I just screw them in and they hold that monitor plexi in just right. Holds it up nice. It's got some give to it because it's plastic. That works. And here we have the way that you mount your monitor. I did not put holes in them for everybody. Basically, this just slides in and out. And they'll put their holes in here to match their monitor frame. And then they'll be able to just slide this back in. Let's see. Oh, and the other thing I did for them is I gave them the vertical mount. So now if they wanted to change this Robotron to play something that's got a vertically mounted game, this is the vertical mount that a game like Make Tracks would have used. So everybody gets one of those as well. Um, should they want to change it away from Robotron. Let's see. I think that about wraps up what I went over as far as when I did my, when I did my build. Things turned out nice though. I'm happy with it, and I'll be happy to get my garage space back. All right, let's go ahead and look at the paint. Let's go over the paint that I use. Now, I will remind you that this is automotive paint, single stage, and you do need a, a paint sprayer to do this, such as an HVLP or a traditional automotive spray gun to do this, and an air compressor to keep up with the spray gun. I use a, about a 30 gallon air compressor when I do this. Now for my primer, uh, kind of hard to tell, but all this stuff was purchased from Napa. And this is the gray acrylic uh, primer surface. And it does a nice job, you know, as a, a base coat. It is thick, as you can kind of see here. And it, that allows you to sand it and wet sand it and make things nice and smooth. For my base coat, I used this silver right here. This is a mild silver metallic. And I believe it is like a Hyundai color is where I believe it came from. Um, but there you go. If you guys need paint codes, feel free to pause and get some paint codes. Um, as far as how much you're going to need to do one cabinet, this size would work for one cabinet. This is a pint can. And these are quart cans here, a little bit bigger. Um, when I did all four, I used a quart can and then I picked up a little bit extra just in case. And I think I might have needed a little bit extra, but not much, just because when you're painting with a metallic color, it might do some what's called tiger striping, and you don't you want to try to avoid that. So, and also on these, normally on a car, you might do two or three coats. On these cabinets, because they're wood, you need about five to six coats to minimize the amount of wood grain that pops through. You want some wood grain popping through, but not a lot um, to get that fact similar factory feel to it. As far as the blue goes, and that is the blue right here. This is the blue I used. It is a Kia color. Um, it is called Ocean Blue. You can see that right there. So that was the color I used. You're only gonna need one can. I only needed one can for all four cabinets. Um, for the blue and the red, you're gonna need a little bit more, but you still only need one can if you're doing one cabinet. You will have leftovers though for both the blue and the red. There's, there's the red. And I used, I had to pick out of the color book and I used one of their universal colors. And there's the universal red, the 42828 red. And in my opinion, it could be just a shade darker. Not by much, but I think the next shade in the book I didn't really care for. Um, it's hard because when you put it over, put the red onto something, it does change colors slightly. And you mix all these with hardener and reducer to spray them. And then the primer got mixed with acetone. And that was it. I think it was a one to one ratio there. And these. I'll tell you what, so it's single stage now. What I could do, or could have done, I didn't do it, is I could have gone over the entire thing with a clear coat. I also could have done a matte clear coat and that would have made it less shiny. I mean, I don't think it's obnoxiously shiny. It's just a nice, fresh coat of paint. You know, nothing too horrible. And it depends on your lighting that you're into. So there's the paint that we used on all these Robotrons. All right, this is it. I'm done. 
you know, using this as a show off piece because all four of them look awesome when they're standing next to each other. Even one with the lower coin door in. Well, there we go. All four reproduction Robotron cabarets just about ready to leave the house. The only thing they're gonna need from their new owners is all you know, the innards, monitor, wiring, harness, all that stuff, and they're gonna order their own control panel overlay because when they make those, it's got the nice adhesive back on it. But look at that, it looks good.